number one electric field strengths can have the unit of so we have one formula which is equals to v by d where we have a we have two plates for example with the potential difference v and a distance d so v by d would be volts per distance is meter so volts per meter is not here so this formula is not working let's see we have another formula the force acting on a particle of charge q so we can write equals to f by q so f the unit of f is newton the unit of charge is coulomb so newton per coulomb yes this answer is there so the answer is b number two the angular speed of the earth about its axis is so we have we need to find the angular speed so omega angular speed equals to 2 pi by time period so we have one rotation for one rotation it takes one day and we need to have our answers in radians per second so sometimes we as students confuse this as not a day we take it as a year but a year is a revolution around the sun when we take a year it is the angular speed of the of the earth around the sun and when we are talking about rotation the 24 hour rotation it is the rotation which it completes within one day so we will take here 24 hours which is 60 minutes which in turn is 60 seconds so we would have 7.26 into 10 to the power minus 5 radians per second so the answer is a number three the graph shows how the force on a stone being fired from a catapult varies with time. Which quantity is represented by the shaded area? This is a quite repetitive question. So the answer would be the change in momentum of the stone. See, let's prove it. We have force equals to change in momentum by time, which is the Newton's second law. So change in momentum would be force into time. And we also know that for any graph, for example, if we take this graph, the gradient would be force by time. And the area would be force into time like the unit will be force into time so newton seconds and the, the gradient would be force per second the gradient of this graph so by this we can conclude that the answer is c the change in momentum of the stone two small charged objects at distance d apart exerts an attractive force f on each other the charge on each object object is doubled and the distance is increased by 2d the force of attraction would be so we have the formula f equals to k into q1 into q2 these are these are both the charged particles between which the force is acting divided by the distance between them r square or since this question is using d we can also write d square so this is the main formula so for the second scenario it is saying the charge on each object is doubled and the distance is also increased to 2d so we can write f2 as k into since both of the charges are doubled it would be 2q1 into 2q2 divided by increase to 2d the distance increase to 2d so 2d squared which is k q1 q2 4q1 q2 divided by 4d squared so we would end up having k q1 q2 by d squared so see here if we replace this with this f we would get get just f so the force acting on the force acting between the charges would remain the same so the answer is c the graph shows how the charge q stored on a capacitor varies with the potential difference v across it the value of the capacitance of the capacitor and the energy stored when the pd is 5 r so when the pd is 5 the charge is 20 mu so Let's find the capacitance. We know that Q equals to CV. So C would be equals to Q by V. We know that Q is 20 mu and the volts is 5. So 20 mu divided by 5 is 4 mu. And here for the energy, we need to find the area under the graph. So the area under the graph would be this. This part is the area under the graph. So the area under the graph is given by qv by 2 so q q is 20 when v, v is 5 20 mu when v is 5 divided by 2 so the energy would be 50 mu joules so the answer to this question is b
Number six, the diagram shows three power magnets, P, Q, and R, are being dropped simultaneously to fall through tubes of different materials. So we have cardboard, copper, and plastic. These magnets will fall through the tubes and reach the ground. The order in which the magnet reaches the ground is. So the Mars scheme says be really easy to see the Mars scheme, but we need to explain how this is happening. So means that when the time is equal to t, for example, and when the magnet is on the ground, the magnet Q will be somewhere here, or here, or here. So why does this happen? So due to the positions, we can deduce that something happens in the tube, in the copper tube, something happens that slows down the magnet. But what happens? So magnetic fields are the res results of electric currents. So when the magnet is in the tube, magnetic field lines have been cut and an EMF is induced. And that EMF produces another magnetic field in the metal that attracts the falling magnet, creating a resistance. This resistance is what slows down our magnet. So when our magnet slows down, it stops generating as much current, which reduces the resistance acting on the magnet's movement. But the gravity speeds up the magnet again until it reaches a medium speed, where the medium speed is actually the constant speed when the magnet is in the tube. So for example, from here to here, it will have a certain speed. So basically, our magnet is creating a whirlpool of electrons around it as it falls through our pipe or our tube. So for this reason, the answer is B. So with this, let me attach a video from YouTube. I found a really good video demonstrating this scenario. Number seven, an electric field is set up between two parallel plates. So these are the two parallel plates. A negatively charged oil drop between the plates will experience an electrostatic force. So let's the graph how this force would vary with distance from the bottom plate. So as the oil drop is going from this plate to this plate, we have to label the amount of our magnitude of force acting on it. The magnitude of force is constant regardless of the distance between each place. It's always constant, it's a pretty repetitive question. You can watch my other videos, you will see that these type of questions are quite repetitive. But the scenarios are mixed up based on one knowledge. So it's better to practice more physics. So since the force does not vary, the force is constant with distance, the uh, answer is C. What is the acceleration of a proton in an electric field strength? 4.0 into 10 to the power 4. So this means that the electric field is applying a force on a proton which is accelerating it and we have to calculate that acceleration that is occurring. So we know that the force is being exerted on an electric field, by an electric field, is F equals to EQ, and we also know that the force, the equation linking the force and acceleration is F equals to MA, so if we equate these those, we would get EQ by M, so acceleration would be One point six into ten to the minus nineteen, since the charge of a proton is what one point six into ten to the minus nineteen, divided by the mass of proton, which is one point six seven into ten to the power minus twenty seven. This is given at the big back of every question paper. The data is given. You can also memorize it. So, from calculator, the answer comes as three point eight three into ten to the power twelve meter per second square. So the answer to this question is B. Number nine. A radioactive isotope of carbon is fourteen. 6. Carbon. Select the row in the table that correctly identifies the neutral atom of this isotope. So in a carbon, we have this. So this is the proton number and this is the mass number. So we know that mass number is equal to proton plus neutron. So the neutron would be mass number minus proton number. So the neutron is, neutron number is 14 minus 6. So it would be 8. So neutron number is 8, the proton number is 6 and we have to find the electron number. So this states that it is a neutral atom. So the number of protons would be equal to the number of neutrons. So if the, pro if the neutron is 8, the proton is 6, the electron would also be 6. So the answer is D. The rest mass of a k-on is 494 mega electron volt per c square. The rest mass in kg. Okay. So this is also a very repeated question. So we, from this, to this if we have to go from mega electron volt per c square to kg we just have to get rid of all these prefixes 
these mega electron volts, C, the speed of light, all of these are prefixes. And there is a rule that to add a prefix, we divide and to remove a prefix, we multiply. So to remove these prefixes, we need to multiply. So we have 2, 494 into mega is 10 to the power 6. To remove, we are multiplying mega 10 to the power 6 into electron volt. We have to get rid of electron volt, so we are removing it. So again, we have to multiply 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by c square. This c square is like this. So we have to divide it or multiplying it by c square or dividing it by c square is the same thing. So 3 into 10 to the power 8 square. C is the speed of light. So the answer comes as 8.78 into 10 to the power minus 28 kg. So the answer to this question is C.